Thank you for watching this video on knee arthritis, total knee replacement, and partial knee replacement. I'm Dr. Joe Gundusky. I'm a fellowship trained hip and knee replacement surgeon. I'd like to help you understand what is entailed in a knee replacement procedure. We will discuss both partial and total knee replacements. This talk is designed for general informational purposes only. You should discuss your particular case with me or your surgeon. First, let's make sure you understand what knee arthritis is. Joints are lined with cartilage. Cartilage is an incredibly smooth, natural tissue that ensures motion between the joint has very little friction. It is like a Teflon coating on the ends of your bones. You are born with thick cartilage. It is a tissue that cannot grow back or repair itself well if injured. When this is worn out, the joint is arthritic. Let's look at the x-rays to get an idea of the progression of arthritis. The space between the bones of the joint, called the joint space, is where cartilage lives. It gets thinner and thinner with arthritis progression, decreasing the joint space. Look at the image on the left. This is a healthy knee. Notice the preserved space between the bones. And in the middle, the joint space is decreased from the normal knee, identified by the arrow. Farthest to the right, notice the complete loss of that space. This is a severely arthritic knee. The bones are now rubbing directly on each other. This is what some call bone-on-bone -bone arthritis. This causes pain and swelling. Arthritis is a progressive disease. It usually starts out slowly and gradually gets worse over time. The only things that can slow down the progression of osteoarthritis, the most common kind of arthritis, is modifying your activities and keeping weight down. In addition, other things may be tried to decrease the pain from arthritis. These in include things like the use of braces, anti-inflammatory medicines, therapy, walking aids such as canes and walkers, and occasionally injections. These help control the pain from arthritis but cannot stop arthritis progression. Once a joint is severely arthritic, the options become living with the discomfort and managing the pain as possible or knee replacement. When the knee joint is severely destroyed, a knee replacement is a very reliable way to take away pain and increase your function. In a knee replacement, we place components, usually made of metal, over the ends of the arthritic bones and place a special insert between those parts to recreate the hinge of the knee joint. Pain from arthritis goes away because the bones are no longer rubbing against each other. Knee replacement is one of the most common major surgeries performed in America. Millions of Americans are walking around with knee replacements. When only part of the knee is severely destroyed, we can sometimes do what is called a partial knee replacement. In the procedure, we place components over just the damaged parts of the bone and leave the remainder of the native joint intact. There are very specific indications and contraindications to a partial knee replacement. It is important that you see someone with experience in both procedures and have a discussion regarding the pros and cons of having a partial or total knee replacement. In general, the partial knee replacement is easier to recover from, but it is not right for everyone. Again, discuss this with a knowledgeable surgeon. He or she should be able to tell you exactly why or why not they would recommend either procedure. Both partial and total knee replacement surgery itself is performed by making an incision in the front of the knee to get access to the knee joint. The arthritic ends of the bones are removed and the components are placed. It is very important for a skilled surgeon to balance all of the soft tissues about the knee correctly so that the knee feels stable and is comfortable. Knee replacement is a significant surgery. We do everything possible to prevent complications. But just like driving your car on the highway carries some risk, so does a major surgery. These risks are not all inclusive. But in general, the major risks that can cause serious problems after replacement surgery are blood clots, infection, and heart and lung problems. Blood clots can form in the legs and move to the lungs. This can be fatal. This happens extremely rarely after joint replacement surgery, and we use blood thinners and early mobilization, among other things, to prevent them. Infection after replacement surgery is problematic because bacteria can cling to the replacement components and be impossible to eradicate without surgery to take the components out. This of course is another major operation that can really affect the outcome of the replacement surgery. 
We do many things to prevent infection. Most importantly, we use sterile technique and antibiotics during and after surgery. Rarely, heart problems, lung problems, and strokes can occur around surgery. Prior to any joint replacement surgery, we do many things to ensure your health is optimized and that it is reasonable to proceed with low risk of these events occurring. There are multiple other risks that are possible, but these are the most concerning. You can discuss all the risks with your surgeon. After you have decided a replacement is right for you, it helps to have an idea of what you'll be in for in terms of the process and recovery. First, you discuss the issue with your surgeon and pick a surgery date. You'll be sent for some lab work, sometimes x-rays, and sometimes to meet with a medical doctor to ensure you're healthy enough for the surgery. A class is often offered that you can attend to learn about the entire process. You will then show up for your surgery. The surgery itself will usually take an hour or two, but you will be getting ready and recovering for much of the day. Some replacement surgeries allow for discharge on the day of surgery. Others require a stay of one to two days. I always encourage people with someone to help them at home to go there instead of a rehab center after their surgery. People are usually more comfortable in their homes and the infection risk is lower. If you do not have anyone to help you, you may need to go to a rehab center and the hospital staff will work with you to make sure you go to a place that's right for you. Therapy is then very important after surgery. The motion you have long term after your knee replacement is much better if you work hard at achieving good motion during the first month after surgery. Often a therapist will come to your house early after surgery and then later when you can get around better you go into a therapist's office for appointments. This continues for two to four months after surgery. I usually tell people that do not have more physical jobs that they should plan on four to six weeks off after surgery. Hopefully I have helped you understand knee arthritis, partial knee replacement, and total knee replacement. You should discuss your specific case with me or your surgeon to help decide what treatment is best for you. Don't be afraid to ask, what would you do if I were your mother, father, sister, or brother? That's a good way to get a good opinion. Please come see me in clinic, see my other information and videos on this site, or go to professional society websites such as those of the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons or the American Association of Hip and Knee Surgeons for more information.